five emerging trends in supply chain and logistics technology. I'm going to cover that today with my guest, Demi Obayomi. He is vice president of Sapphire Ventures. Hello, Demi. Hey, Bob. How are you? Good. Thanks for being with me today. Of so, course. Kind of a lightning round of five big ones. Let's let's go through them one by one really quickly, and I'd like to hear your views on each of them. Absolutely. The first is this idea of supply chain visibility, which has always been a concern, goes mainstream. What do you mean by that? You know, so what we mean by that is over the, we've had tracking for all of our consumer packages for many, many years now. We're, we're so used to being able to open up an app, open up Amazon, open up Walmart or whatever, and know where your package is on its way to you. You can even see someone like right outside your door, just a few streets away. Mm -hmm. And you know, historically in supply chain logistics, um, shippers just didn't have that type of visibility into where their package was. It could be on the ocean and then you just completely lost visibility of where sure. that particular package is. And, you know, of course, shippers are demanding to actually be able to know where a particular package is at a particular point in time, because these are multi-million dollar packages, right? Very expensive, high value goods. Mm -hmm. um, and the experience in our consumer lives is what's driving shippers to now push for that demand as well in their businesses. And that's really what's led to, you know, the rise of companies like 4044, which helps companies pinpoint whether where their packages are or where their cargo is, you know, on the on the seas or on the rails on the roads. Mm -hmm. um, and you can actually go deeper if you work with, you know, someone like Tive. They can actually tell you what's the temperature, you know, in the you know of your particular pallet. You know, uh -huh. what's the humidity, what's the orientation. If you need to go to that level of detail on you know what's happening with your packages, it's going from you know the origin point to the destination point. Sorry, it's just literally real time, Demi, or near time, or, or yeah, this how is close? this is yeah, this is very close to real time. I mean, mm -hmm. they're they, they, with you know something like Tide, they're basically able to like emit a signal, and that's picked up you know by their by their platform, and the customer can view that on a dashboard and see, uh -huh. okay, this is the temperature while it was you know in Vegas, this is the temperature while it was in San Francisco, you know, and so on and so forth. And same in Forty Forty Four, you can pinpoint exactly where a particular. Uh, shipment is, you know, at a particular point in time as well. And when you say customer, are you referring to like the retailer slash distributor? Yes. And then the they... shipper, so the owner, the owner of the, the right. item. And then they, of course, are in a position to pass that information down to the consumer, to the end yes. shopper. Yes, exactly. Right. Exactly. And sometimes logistics companies will, will purchase this as, you know, an additional service to their customer who owns the cargo. Right. And to enable them to know where their packages are, their cargo is at a particular point in time, uh -huh. you know, as well. Okay, cool. All right, that's number one. That's number, number one. Number two, customer experience, which everybody talks about, mm -hmm. becomes critical to survival. Exactly. What's that all about? So really, you know, that's again, looking at our consumer lives and just thinking about, you know, our relationship with, you know, an existing retailer, maybe like an Amazon, if your package is lost, you can quickly connect to someone, mm -hmm. you know, digitally through chat, or you can have a phone call with someone to discuss where exactly what's wrong with your package. If you need a refund, again, it's a very easy process. Um, logistics at the end of the day is a services business, right? And there's, there's not, there's little differentiation between one particular logistics provider and the other one. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, what, what really changed the game is that companies like Flex, Flexport, and other tech enabled logistics providers came into the market and you know they're digital first right they're technology mm -hmm. people who came and decided to build a tech enabled logistics you know company and so all of their customers have a, a digital you know website or platform that they can log into they can see all of their documents they can see all the communication they've had with flexport they can uh, they can communicate or chat with someone from flexport right to figure out if there's an issue with a particular mm -hmm. uh, piece of cargo that's moving across you know the seas and if you're if you're a traditional uh, freight forwarder in this particular example, and you don't have that um, you don't have that platform, someone always has to pick up the phone or always has to send an email or something like that right. to communicate with you, then the experience is just it's just not as good, right, as it is with someone like Flexport, and that's really forcing a lot of companies to either build some of this digital experience internally uh -huh. or to work with you know vendors like logic sport to yeah. do that and by you know, critical well. survival what we mean is that customers simply won't do business yeah, customers again has a higher standard of what they expect with from a, a vendor yeah with a with a retailer or an e-tailer if they fall down on the job you know they're, exactly they're, they're dead to that customer exactly so it's it, and it's really for like logistics companies like if you're a freight forwarder mm -hmm. if you're a trucking company or you know anyone who's involved, who's responsible for moving goods from point to point. Yeah. If you don't offer that digital experience, then you're you're you're, you're at a disadvantage, right? Compared to like a tech-enabled broker or a tech-enabled right. freight forwarder. So like okay, this next one's interesting. Comprehensive risk management. Yes. Is a prerequisite for resilience. I feel like I should ask you the meaning of every single one of those words, but so, uh, just in a, a bird's exactly. eye view of it, what, what are we talking about? There? Yeah, you know, when it comes to risk management, um, this really is kind of born out of the, of the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. And also we had geopolitical challenges post-pandemic too. But with the pandemic, you had factories starting to shut down, 
Um, yeah. And when a factory shut down, that means that if someone, whoever, whoever was manufacturing their goods in that factory, no longer can produce those goods, and that's going to affect the downstream customer. Uh, who was expecting those goods at a particular point in time. Uh -huh. um, similarly, with the pandemic, you also had a lot of, and your political concerns, you had a lot of um, raw materials that started to become scarce. So I think of I think of risk management almost in like two levels. Mm -hmm. One, what is the state of my factory? Like, is, co is, there, is, co is, there, is there is there some, you know, maybe COVID or some other disease? Is there something that's impacting that particular factory at a unit level, yeah. such that people can't come into work and manufacture my products? And then secondly, even if the factory is fine, Am I able to get the semiconductors that I need? Am I able to get the raw materials that I need to that factory so that they can actually produce the goods that I need and I can deliver that to my end consumer? So uh -huh. risk management is really the process of knowing what's going on, you know, at your factories at any given point in time and even being able to predict that, look, there's a semiconductor shortage. I have only so much stock. That means that I only have, you know, I only have so, so many days I can produce my um, items for until I run out and therefore I need to go find um, Additional stock, right? And to source yeah. additional stock and from as elsewhere. As you say, the end result, resilience, the ability to stand exactly. Up the end result adjust. is that your your end customer does not know that your factory shut down or that or care. You, you're almost, exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> they right. do not sympathize with you. So that okay. that is risk management, and then that leads to resilience. Okay, cool. Another one, super important these days: investing in optimization to eliminate waste. waste. What's exactly? That you know, it's this is something I learned. You know, as I spend more and more time in supply chain and logistics. Um, you know, Convoy has a stat that about 35% of heavy duty trucks um, run empty, right? So that's billions yeah. and billions of miles. Just in the US alone, you've got these empty trucks, nothing is in them. And they, obviously they're consuming fuel, the driver's time. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's a huge waste. And not to mention yeah. even some of the um, sustainability challenges that that proves. And so, you know, what, what, we're, what we're seeing here is that companies need to, need to figure out ways to optimize their routes you know, for example, so that you no longer have these empty trucks going back and forth the country because mm -hmm. they couldn't find a load to pick up, you know, on their way back home. And there's been some interesting companies that have emerged to to try and fix that by, um, for example, there's a company called Leaf Logistics. They think about this as a coordination problem. And so if they know that one particular company needs to move goods from San Diego to LA and another one needs to move goods from LA back to San Diego, they can almost like create a network with those two right. companies and ensure that there's there's a reduction in the number of empty trucks that have been driven right. back. So and sometimes forth. when we talk about a capacity crunch, it doesn't mean the capacity is not there. Exactly. It just means it's not being optimized and used exactly. properly. Exactly. Okay. In fact, cool. a lot of people think we have enough capacity. It's just not being coordinated. For sure. Well okay. enough. Okay. A final one: the need for data interoperability. Yes. Among between where exactly? This is a great. Yeah. This is a good one. So what I've learned is that first of all, a lot of a lot of legacy enterprises have built up their own internal systems. So. Mm -hmm. If you're a freight forwarder, you may have one pricing system for air freight, and then you may have another pricing system for ocean freight, and you need to connect that to your TMS and to your website. And so those four systems now all need to communicate to each other. But it's going to take you, you know, a team of 78 people, and it's going to take them a year to be able to connect those different systems together by themselves. Yeah. And that's kind of created opportunities for vendors like Chain.io who, who have expertise in this particular area. They've done it before for several other you know, customers and they can basically plug and play the existing connections, mm -hmm. you know, for you and help you piece together your um, systems. And that way you can better serve, you know, your own end customers. Yeah. So there's sort of like that internal use case where I need all my systems to talk together for me to be more effective as a business. And then there's the external use case where I could be a supplier and I'm, I, I, I sell my goods to Walmart for them to put on their, on their store shelves. I need to communicate with them back and forth that, hey, I'm sending you an order. It's going to arrive at this particular time in this quantity and so on and so forth. And right. new vendors also emerge to help facilitate those connections as well, because a lot of people who are born in the last 20, 30, 40 years are not used to EDI. They're used to APIs, but yes. now they need someone who can actually convert an API to EDI and then help them communicate with Walmart. Visibility, optimization, efficiency, that seems to be a theme that runs through all five of these. Uh, exactly. Trends. Thank you so much, Demi, for our kind of outlining these critical ones. But I want to take just a quick moment to ask you specifically about Sapphire Ventures. Who are you guys and how where, how do you fit in? Absolutely. So we're a global venture firm. You know, we invest across all of North America, all mm -hmm. of Europe, Israel, and we even have investments in India, Australia, and several other countries as well. We manage about $10 billion in total. And you know, we think of ourselves as a growth stage investor. So really helping companies who achieve product market fit to scale from you know, the single digit millions of ARR mm -hmm. all the way through to nine figures you know, of ARR. And we've worked with companies like Project 44 specifically in supply chain logistics to do you know, just that. We've worked with them, we found them you know, when they were single digits and now there are many, many times you know, that at this particular point in time. 
Um, in addition to capital, we strongly believe in supporting entrepreneurs with additional services. And so we have teams internally that will work with our founders, help them find the best talent for their companies, help them find the best customers and partners from our network, and also help them with their internal operations um, too. So we're based in the Bay Area, but we also have offices in Austin, in New York and the UK. And we're excited to work with entrepreneurs in supply chain logistics and also you know, a, a, a wider variety of categories um, mm -hmm. to help them build what we call companies of consequence. We covered a lot of territory in a very short time. <laughs> Thanks so much, Demi. These are great five emerging trends to hear about and also learn a little bit about Sapphire Ventures itself. Of course. Thank really you, Bob. appreciate you being with me. Thanks great so much. Great to be here at Supply Chain, I look forward to, to being here again. Okay, cool. I've been speaking with Demi Obayomi of Sapphire Ventures. Thank you very much for watching.